how did you move from anger to fear to finally finding peace? We sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and found out that my husband's daughter, Susan, had been struck and killed by lightning, and she was six months pregnant. Flew back, and that's when my life really changed. 9-11 didn't do it for me. I was in the last aircraft in US airspace on 9-11. That was disturbing enough. Susan died, no tools whatsoever to find peace. So I'm literally just shaking like this because I'm not allowed to express anger or fear. But what if we could come to this place where we say, getting angry isn't helping. What if each of us could find that place of peace inside? Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever felt the world is spiraling out of control and pray there's something you can do, then do we have the show for you. Today I'll be talking with Suzanne Giesman, best-selling author, former senior military officer and commander, and angel communicator and expert extraordinaire. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about hearing from the other side, what our angels and guides have to say, and what we can all do to not only make it through this time, but help humanity and each other shine. So welcome back to the show, Suzanne. Are you ready to shine? I'm always hoping to shine, Michael. Definitely <laughs> ready to do so with you today. Woohoo! All right, Suzanne. So before we dive right into things, you're a military commander, met with six presidents, and you worked with the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and now you're an amazing channel and medium. So a while back, we spoke about war in the Ukraine, and I must ask, with war continuing along with fires, floods, fighting, and everything, is humanity in trouble? No, Michael. This is the cycle of life. It just look, go back through history, go forward in time, and you will find that everything goes in cycles. All you have to do is look at the seasons, the four seasons, and flow with it. I like that. I love that. What season would you say we're in right now? Hmm. Feels like fall, but that's the guidance that I hear as I, and that's where we went. I wanted to say winter because I'm the optimist and I want to say that everything's, you know, rosy, the flowers are going to start coming up again soon. But, you know, I think we're, we're seeing a bit of a downward spiral and it, it could continue going down, but it will come back up. So what can we do to make it better is always the question. Would you say, and I want to go into there, and we're going to spend time talking about channeling, talking about communicating with the other side and what we're hearing from our angels and guides. Would you say it's a time of a, a global reckoning or a shift or a recognition of something at this time? We are always in the time of shifting. That's the whole purpose of life. And I'm, I'm going to say life and my acronym for life repeatedly, because it's so important to understand what life really is. Love in full expression. That's the acronym. With love being God's source, the flow, you as pure being, we are all this connected state of being expressing itself. And it's going to do that whether we get in the way or not. So when I said just a second ago, what we can do to make it better, you don't mess with life. You get out of its way and become part of the flow and then watch how it unfolds. This is not a viewpoint that's real popular with people because we want to fix it. We want to end the suffering. We, the end the suffering is to see that life is low. I love to ski. Ski uphill, ski downhill, ski sideways, ski mountaineering. There's cross-country skiing. Anything you give me with two things that go on my feet. I skate as well, and I love to do it. There's a concept or term in skiing called the fall line, which is to follow that energetic down, line down the hill. I like to call it the flow line. Mm -hmm. What it sounds like you're talking about is getting back in that flow line, and we'll, we'll call it something grandiose for today the flow line of love. How do we get back in the energetic flow line? And is this a cyclical thing that at times we feel, I'm putting that in quotes because I know you'll, you'll pounce all over me for it. We feel like we're more separate or out of flow than others. This time now, we're definitely in a state of separation. And that's why it feels so tumultuous because it's when we feel separate we're, that we're not flowing. We think everybody has to do everything the same way instead of just being with how life is unfolding. Yeah. Why does it feel more separate right now? The energies are so, I'm tuning in. See, yeah. <laughs> this is, I always no, no, like. And, and that's, I'm, I'm loving that you're going deep. 
Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Why does it feel so separate? Is because the energies are so strong. They really are swirling around and we're resisting it. So when you put up a wall against the flow, it's like flowing against the, the main current. It feels very dissonant. What happens if you relax and say, okay, wow, all of a sudden you're going with it and trusting the process. So what we have is a lot of people who are resisting. So we have waves within waves where the major current is just going this way. Thank you. Is it a matter you think of, you're mentioning that it's all cyclical and I, in my lifetime, and, and I was, I was guessing I was born in the seventies, there was some strife going on, but it does seem that there's more derision or division. Now, everybody seems to be butting heads. In fact, I almost want to put your, your commander hat back on and say, what do you see going on with that brain versus what you see going on with the other side? Oh. Maybe I do ask that question. Yeah, I would, I'm glad you did because the difference is phenomenal. When I put my commander's brain on, this yep. is the way it has to be. This is the way it must be. And as you get into this, I need to control mode. When I take that commander's hat on, I step back and shift to more spacious awareness. I was, We could call it the viewpoint of the soul, where when you stop trying to control things, you say, isn't that interesting? Look at all the division. There's definitely more division now, but I would not say it's any more divisive than the 70s. Go back then and, wow, I'm about 10, 10 years ahead of you here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I just remember one of my first thoughts or memories was a guy getting on a helicopter and something like, I am not a crook. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, and then my husband has another 10 years on us, so... And then, you bring up that time and he just goes like this. They're very, very divisive. So this is the cycle. This is the cycle. This, so that was the 70s. This is 2020. Something or other. You know, move forward. Even though we'll come to a place of peace, I bet you we have more tumultuous times as new generations are birthing something new. Birth pains are painful. Okay. We got to go there. And then I have to go back to Ty, if, if that's all right. Mm. More tumultuous times ahead as new generations are birthed. What does that mean? <laughs> I can see people in their seat going, uh, wait a second, I didn't sign up for this. No, it's, I just can't stop thinking about when I, I was just in Kansas City over the weekend. I flew down yeah. there, over there, wherever I am. <laughs> and I was so stunned by the brand new airport in Kansas City. And there were three different things that I really don't want to get into that were a sign of the times. And they've just so conflicted with my BS, my belief system, the way I was raised, the way you're supposed yeah. to do something. And I was so aware that if I had been born several generations earlier, I would just flow with that. What's the big deal? So I knew I was so amused. And my reaction to it was like one of the first times recently where I felt a real generational difference. I've been able to sit back and observe all that that's going on now. But for the first time, it felt personal. And that's the challenge. When we take something personally, it has everything to do with our own BS and nothing to do with the flow of life. So people of every generation are going to have their collective BS that's personal to them, personal belief system. So if you move this forward 50 years, you're going to have new, several new generations that are going to have completely different sets of beliefs than the ones right now making the changes that are upsetting the older generations. That's why the beauty of the life cycle is we only stick around about 80 to 100 years because we start to get stuck in our belief systems and there's no growth. Forgive me. <laughs> if I was to give you some English muffins, what's, what's Ty's favorite breakfast? He had an English muffin this morning. That's there. I don't know why I went English muffin. <laughs> there we go. If I gave Ty English muffins, if I gave you, what, what do you like for breakfast? I just have eggs and bacon at, like every right. day. Yeah. That's so it. There we go. E eggs, I was thinking bacon, I didn't catch. So we've got, we've got uh, 
uh, English muffins. We've got eggs. You're both sitting down there. I'm a fly in the wall. And, and we're seeing uh, missile sales and this going on and that going on and Azerbaijan and all of this. What is the conversation, if I may ask, between the view, two of you going on right now? Well, it's not about that because my poor husband has learned that I just send love. I really do. I don't go to a place of insisting that anything has to be any one way. And so he has learned that I'm not the greatest conversationalist about divisive topics because I see where it's all coming from. And I, I don't give him anything to push back against. And I also don't agree with everything. So I don't agree or disagree. We just, I'll just say, well, isn't that interesting? And then I talk about ways we might all come together. So really, I know I'm a challenging wife. Oh. And we love you, Ty. We love you, Ty. We love you, Ty. We love you, Ty. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the music and finding where that flow line is. Okay. You're creating a different outcome at the breakfast table by where you're placing your energy, your awareness, and your attention, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. And I love it because uh, give me about 10 years ago before I got on this spiritual path, and he would have gotten very upset about whatever was in the news that morning. And my pattern growing up was you're not allowed to express negative feelings, upset, anger. So when I would feel his upset and anger, I couldn't handle it. And I'd want to leave the table or I'd get upset at him. You're not allowed to be angry. Now he can be however he wants, but I'm not going there. And so I just, I'm just in this place of peace, which is huge. Now, the next question is, does that solve the problems in Azerbaijan and the Ukraine? It does not. But what if on a global basis, we could come to this place where we say getting angry isn't helping? What if each of us could find that place of peace inside and instead of being reactive, say, what is a, a viewpoint that would help us find commonality and find peace externally as well as internally? Thank you. Oh, but I just want to stop and I want to make it seem like Ty or anybody else who gets upset, there's something wrong with them. This is oh, just no, 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 no. the course of evolution. And I, I mean, I still get upset about things. I have a monthly webinar coming up where I'm going to tell everybody how I literally lost it last month. So this is a, it is that balancing act and it's challenging and we're all just unfolding perfectly. I, I was sharing in my YouTube live, I don't have a political bone in my body. I, I, I believe, you know, we train guns for hugs and I want to hug everybody and I want to love everybody and I don't care what you've done. I'm going to start from here and now. And I was watching the news, what I call the negative worthless stimulation. And I'm going, wait a second, we won't talk about the climate, but we got guns and missiles. Guys, <laughs> we got to make some big shifts here. So you do care. That is political to take a side. So that's what we do. I'm going to try to take the side of love, but you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. So we came into this world. We're not separate. We get to look for that flow line. Is this world really a simulation? I asked that question to my guides once and they gave me an answer. And I said, I like that answer. What sign will you give me to validate that I can trust it? And I no, no, I said, I want to see a VHS, VHS. Remember those cassettes? Oh, yeah. They won against Betamax. <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. The next day, I'm browsing through some memes, and there's a meme about Betamax. And I, looked, <laughs> I mean, when's the last time you saw VCR, VHS? And I looked at my guys, and I said, "That is, is that it? Can I stretch it? And they said, it's because your question was, is this assimilation? And the answer is kind of, sort of, but not exactly. <laughs> so a VHS is kind of, sort of, but not exactly a Betamax. I thought it was brilliant, brilliant. The, the sign was not quite right. And the answer is, yes, it's like a simulation, but it's not as if there is some, I'm really not a moviegoer, so I can't really address the movie Matrix, but I don't know what happened there, but it's not like there's some being on the other side that's, controlling this simulation. However, the simulation analogy is fabulous. If you've ever worn 
a virtual reality headset. I own one. And if you imagine that we can use the analogy of a simulation to represent our objective physical world, then when we go in meditation, the perfect analogy is we take off the headset and access another reality. I love it. If we had a headset, then if we're all living in or the yellow glasses, VR world, we'll call it, and yeah. we can take them off and see the real world. So real, I'll put in quotes. You would see, you would see another world and another world and another world. And the goal is to get to the place where there are no stories, no external realities, nothing arising from within awareness, just pure being. Now you know oneness. And this whole conversation, it all arises from my work as a medium, which has taught me that to connect with any being across the veil, we have to learn how to access the place beyond every world, every story. It's not just our world or another world. It's worlds upon worlds upon worlds. So where's the commonality? Love is lack of separation. So that state of pure being beyond any stories, beyond any right or wrong, you know, you said before, you're right, you're right, you're right. And the ego loves to be right. Get, get beyond that. Just go to the place where there is no right or wrong. I'll meet you there. If there is a place, and I know there is. Through me that said that, not me. <laughs> 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 you rock, Rumi. <laughs> if there is a place, we know that place exists. It's and right here. Take off. So then the question is, going back to that simulation, it is, but it isn't. It's more Betamax than VHS. Yes. Um, we won't even go to the future laser disc. But then does it matter how we, do, how we act, what we do while we're here if this isn't quote real so the answer to that comes down to there's never any one answer so i'll give you two because it depends it's all relative from the viewpoint of pure being it doesn't matter because you can't disturb pure being it's pure potential so anything is possible if something doesn't go right like a universe It'll ultimately come back to just being, and that didn't work very well, so we'll try another universe. But does it matter to us now? Yes, because we are part of the experiment called life on planet Earth. So the choices that we make, do they add to the love? Do they bring evolution in harmony with life, love, and full expression? Or do they detract from it? We want this experiment to work. We don't want to implode. So to us within the quasi simulation, it matters. When we step out of it and take off the headset, we will keep arising no matter what, as pure potential arising as love and full expression for all eternity. But if we want this story, this stimulation to continue with peace, and con connectedness instead of divisiveness, then we can make choices from the heart. See, that's a really long answer. With, but when you start seeing from multiple levels, things make more sense. It, it does. And, and I see the world and I see spirituality is, is paradoxes, or it's all the flip side of the same coin, which is, is sort of like if we look at well, electricity that's powering these computers, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. I can't say the negative is bad. I can't say the positive is bad. They're both that pump. In fact, I woke up this morning, Suzanne, and, and I heard, ask her about the evolution of consciousness or the evolution of oneness. Well, it's evolving within us as we come to realize we are more than this personal self. And it evolves. Consciousness itself simply is. It doesn't need to evolve. It's the wholeness, but it arises, mm -hmm. it bubbles up, and then what bubbles up evolves until it's played itself out and then it dissolves back in. Somebody asked me a question the other day, well, is this emptiness or fullness? Well, of course, it's both at the same time, everything. 
You know, people are afraid of dying because I dissolve into nothingness. But that nothingness is also fullness. So that's when my guides woke me up and said, flow resolves emptiness and fullness. Let's go there on a, on a few different levels. First this off. Deep, deep stuff. We don't, we're not talking about talking to angels, right? But this is, this is how we find peace. But this is also this connectedness of hearing from the other side allows us to have this conversation. If oh, you think yeah. this table is all that there is, so there is a direct connection to angels and guys. If, if we think the table is all there, there is, then uh, life is really scary right now. Really, really scary. Oh, and it's a decade, uh, over a decade of talking to angels and guides that have brought me to this place of peace. And so is that better than anybody else? Only if you look for peace, it's not better. It's just a, it's a nice goal. So the, the angels are part of our simulation and they're here to help us find the peace within it and succeed in this experience of life. I never even knew angels existed. I would, I thought that was crazy, ridiculous stuff. But they are definitely here to help us find peace. You retired as a commander, your husband as a captain. You went out on a sailboat for a three-hour tour. Sorry, making <laughs> fun here. And and what happened that started you on this journey? We sailed across the Atlantic Ocean after a couple of years of going north and south, and. Got all the way over to Croatia and found out that my husband's daughter, Susan, had been struck and killed by lightning, and she was six months pregnant. So we left the boat over there and flew back, and that's when my life really changed. 9-11 didn't do it for me. I was in the last aircraft in U.S. airspace on 9-11. That was disturbing enough. No tools whatsoever to find peace. None. Susan died no tools whatsoever to find peace. So I'm literally just shaken like this because I'm not allowed to express anger or fear or anything. That's the way I was raised. So how does it come out? In shaking. And then I found peace in meditation, but that's not why I went into meditation. I went into meditation to find my stepdaughter, her spirit. And boy, I found her and I found so much more. So that's my goal, to show people that we can all learn to tap into the deeper la layers of the self with a capital S. I knew the story, but I didn't know. And, and I'm putting your commander's hat back on, on you. <laughs> you weren't going into meditation. <laughs> you were going into meditation. And oh, I am yeah. going to find a way to find her. But you know, Michael, it's in the last year that I realized that that's why I have succeeded because I had an intention and a goal. And I've been teaching people, well, meditation is the way to learn to connect with your loved ones. But if you go into it without a specific goal, you'll probably just get bored pretty fast mm -hmm. and your mind will wander. So get a single-minded focus. Mine for several years was, Susan, I want to see you. I haven't yet seen you, so I'm going to come back every day until I do. But all kinds of fun things happen, all kinds of interesting and, and things and revelations happen in that time. And I found out recently she wasn't coming through on purpose because I needed that time to develop focus, concentration, and to have those other experiences first. Did she tell you this or did angels? Yes. What, what were you told? She did. She came to me and she said, Suzanne, it's not that you weren't doing anything right. And this is huge for everybody listening who says, well, I've been trying to connect with my loved one who passed. What am I doing wrong? Nothing. Trust the process. Trust your unfolding. How have you changed since the passing of your loved one that would not have happened if they hadn't passed? How, not the, not the stuff that hurts, but the kind of surprising things in your life. Yeah. What is happening in your meditation while you're holding that single-minded focus to connect with your loved one? She showed me that, that I developed very good concentration. I discovered angels are real. I just developed a relationship with my spirit guides. If she had come to me right away, that would have been it. Okay, mission accomplished. Susan's here. But instead, you mean I have these helpers who will help me with the day-to-day -day stuff in my life? 
You mean I can find peace no matter what? This was unexpected because I stuck to that main goal. Thank you. For It's a question I was meaning to ask, but I had no idea we were going to go in this direction. So this is awesome. Has the message coming through? Because I, I see... Uh, all of our channeling and mediumship and connecting, whichever way we do it, I, I see it as a teaching tool. We are always being taught, no matter where we are on our path, which is why if you're given all the answers, you might as well sit on the couch with the bonbons. <laughs> you, no know, you could be given all the answers, like 365 answers, one a day, and they could give you, they, spirit guides, angels, could give you the same answers the next year. 365 of them, and you'd hear them differently because we're always growing. So that's the really cool thing about this path. It leads in perfectly. Are the messages always staying the same 365, or is what you're hearing as we're going through this, we'll call it autumn now, as we're going through this this autumn of humanity or whatever version, I don't know, 10.0 or whatever, are you hearing different messages, and are you getting different messages for those you you? I'm not hearing different messages. And I love that because that's the test of truth with a capital T. From the day my guide Sanaya started giving me the daily way messages with over 5,000 of them now in my Awaken Way app, which you've, you're you you're familiar with that, Michael. Yes. Um, the messages. But, but, but do we, can, we can plug it. I can do this. I can do a shameless plug to get an app that you can ask a question, you can press a button, and it's going to give you an answer. Yep, but it also gives you daily fresh inspiration. But how fresh is it? New analogies, new words, but the messages have not changed. There are multiple messages that repeat themselves. And I see this now, and I kind of get to the point where I say, well, they've talked about this before, but I'm not going to filter my guides. And just this morning, the message I got, I thought, well, I've heard that one a hundred times before. And yet it came up in my personal life so clearly couple hours later, I just laughed and I said, yep, yeah, that's where I am on this cycle. I needed to hear that again today. So, Would you mind sharing what that was? Wow, I'm in a different space right now. I know, I thought about that and it's okay. If I don't mean to give you a zinger. No, it's all just about letting go and not letting what's out here, the ripples, remove your focus from I am not my story, you know. Yeah. That's not what the message would say, but that's what it said to me. So that's the beauty of truth. It's it speaks exactly to the heart of each soul who hears it. And and I love that because well, there's this this concept of simultaneous realities. And you know, two people go into court to testify about one situation and they say something completely different, but they actually, from a universe point of view, they could have seen it completely differently and both have seen perfect truths. When you get that question twice in a row, two years apart, it's a different version of you now. Oh, yes. I mean, I've been teaching some courses pretty much the same because they were downloaded from Spirit for several years. And I have people that come back the next year and they say, wow, you really changed this course. And I say, not really. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Although I do have several courses that they are always changing a little because simply because I have new experiences, new sessions I do with clients, bring in new examples, but the basic teaching is the same. Well, let's dive there for a second. I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun too. Oh, I love talking with you, Michael. I hope everybody else is enjoying listening. What is, I, I think everybody's probably enjoying being a fly on the wall for this one. What is something that's changed? I've, I've radically changed over the last year. <laughs> what has been a big change in your understanding or how you step forward or step inward in the world over the last year? I'm wondering why my guy Brenda is tickling my hair right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Brenda. <laughs> the biggest change, the big change in me is absolutely letting go of more of the story. My goal is to let go of it completely, but I'm, I've been praying regularly to just, um, integrate the awareness that we are souls here and now and not be so much in the Suzanne story. So um, I'm even inside myself, letting go of the name Suzanne, you know, it's, it, I'm just as tired of being held prisoner to a story. Do, yeah. do you have a different name? I do. And there's no way in heck I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you mine because oh, good. so, so I had, what was it? Hernia surgery a year and a half ago. I had something else. I don't know when, 
And, and so, you know, they go to put you on their knife and, they, and they're like, so tell us your name. And I go, Mikey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where did that come from, right? I'm just this little, I was never called Mikey growing up. I'm just this little joyous kid. Um, it, it's completely detached from my identity of who and what I was or who and what I am. And it gives me this warm, chuckly feeling. So when they wake up and they're like, how are you doing, Mikey? <laughs> it's like it's the cosmic joke. I'm like, I'm doing great. I'm happy now. But we ultimately, if we can get to a place where we don't even need a name, that's lovely. Except that we have these bodies that have to operate in this reality. So it's helpful. <laughs> so know? how do we or do we? This is a time where we're working and, and uh, I, I would agree, I believe, we all get to work on this, of letting go more. And it appears to be a time, at least from an earthly construct, that if we want this place to stay around for our kids and our kids' kids, we get to step forward perhaps more. How do we balance that? Moment by moment, noticing disturbance in your sense of peace. And I say you're like this because really peace is universal. It doesn't belong to you or me. So when you when you realize there's disturbance in the peace, there's something you're taking personally. So the statement I was given from my guides, oh, like a couple months ago, this is a huge change for me, is just don't believe it. So... For example, I just led a cruise to Alaska with a, with a large group of people. And, and when people laugh at all your jokes and you're on stage, I can see why comedians get addicted to that. It's, it gives you this emotional high. And there's some mental thing that says people like me, you know, and I would go to bed. I couldn't sleep because that adrenaline rush kept flooding back, just kept keeping me awake. I was like, this is ridiculous. This could happen to anybody. Because we get addicted to good feelings and the rush. And suddenly I heard, just don't believe it. It was so powerful. So when that feeling came up, it was like, yeah, that happened. But I don't need to believe that people like me or don't like me, that I'm funny or not funny. If I just don't believe it, oh, my God, there was peace and I slept. So apply that to anything that disturbs you. A lot of spiritual teachers teach this in their own way, like Byron Katie, you know, is it true? Is it true? Well, if I just don't believe that that's the ultimate reality, there's the peace. Tell me more. A year and a half ago, and we, we spoke about Ukraine and Russia about a year or so ago. And, and I'm Ukrainian Jew and Russian Jew. And I woke up right before things took place. I woke up with a terrible nightmare uh, about fires of forests on the border. And, and I'm like, what, what is this about? And I woke up kind of, uh, and, and then it was about a day, maybe two later that we, we know what's kind of taken place since then. We all have this plugged, plugged inness to the zeitgeist. We can all, if we really check in, 9-11 is a perfect example. And, and, uh, you know, they actually did tests on this with random number generators that went off the charts at that time. When you looked at global coherence. We all get in alignment with a frequency, and it may not be the most fun frequency. So how do we go when we wake up on whatever morning, and maybe something has taken place, and we haven't checked the news, what I call the negative word <laughs> stimulation yet, but how do we identify, is this mine, is it not mine, or even better yet, how do we get a giant set of shears and cut through that to get okay. back to here? There's a song by Dido, nothing I, really, nothing I have is really mine. So does it matter if it's your upset or somebody else's? You are experiencing it. Let it flow through you without reacting to it by just observing it. This is why some kind of meditative or contemplative practice is so helpful because it becomes part of you to know what it feels like to just be. And if you can just dissolve into that state, no matter what, by using a tool like saying, isn't this interesting? Boom, the piece is right here. So I, I definitely reacted to other people's energy, but you just learn to say, ah, it's just energy. And it flows and you hold that other state that's always here, always available. The more that we use that message, and I think it's brilliant, isn't that interesting? Because that takes us and puts us at the observer rather than the participant in the dance. 
the more you use that, like uh, you've been using it and using it and using it, and you walk to go on an airplane and all of a sudden they've got on some news in front of you and their things blowing up and fires and is it become easier? The more that you practice it, isn't that interesting to be able to cut that cord? Well, that's the that's it. It's you know we're conditioned to react the way we do, so it's deconditioning, and it just takes presence and commitment and dedication. And some people say, well, that's your military discipline. Well, then thank you, God. <laughs> it's the intention. If you're tired of the, of being knocked off balance by the waves, you know this a little phrase I have back in my my house in South Carolina. You can't control the waves, but you can learn to surf, right? So who's to say discipline is a bad thing? Well, oh, I'm not course, saying it's a bad thing. No, no. I think I there like are people, that, the people who say, I have no discipline. That's your BS. We all have peace within us. Set the intention. If you want peace badly enough, you'll find your own way, your own method of Letting go when you notice the disturbance is knocking you off balance. Is there, we all have our unique way, but is there an easiest starting point, entry point now? Because I, I look at the, the duality or the polarity of the world and I say, well, the world appears to have gone mad to help us <laughs> to kind of clean the table and get things in order. But just awareness is the key. Awareness. And so just set the intent. Let's just do it right now, Michael. I love to do this Thank with you. people. It, it, we could say, I want to do that. And you feel how that energy dissipates. But when you set a very clear intention from your heart, now you're harnessing your co-creative effort, uh, efforts and ability. So just really just shut out the external world for a moment by closing your eyes. Take a deep breath to get centered. Everybody, if you're tired of being tossed around and you would like to be part of the change and you would like to find peace right now state i am setting the intention that from now on i will be aware of when energies are knocking me off balance and i will use my particular keyword to drop into the state of isn't that interesting and from there, I'm asking guides and angels to help me make higher choices. There, that's the start. That was kind of formal, a formal intention. Somebody once at a class said, I didn't catch that. Could, we, could you say that again? So it does, the wording isn't important. It's going into the heart. And here's, here's another intention said the same way. I'm sick of getting tossed around. Wake me up. Let me notice the disturbance. Thanks a lot. <laughs> that's, you know, that's an intention. But in the but, first one, you, oh, go ahead. No, we ju you just make it clear. You stop and it's from the heart. And now you're going to pay attention. Thank you. You mentioned in the first one, you said your particular keyword. Do we choose a particular keyword? That's like a wake up keyword for us. Right. Like, for example, I just said, some people say I have no discipline. That's just BS. That is your belief system. We all have it. It's innately part of us to have will. So use it to your benefit. And I'm constantly changing my word. My latest word is story. So if I become aware I'm knocked off balance, I just inside I go story. And that just jolts me into awareness that, oh, am I going to let my personal stuff knock me off balance or just go to peace and let the flow happen? So that's my word. Use it. If you like it. Find another one. Beautiful. There's another technique different but similar. It's, it's quintessential Suzanne Giesemann, and I, I think it's beneficial for everyone. You challenge your angels and guides. I think you would say your angels more, but, but you challenge them. You know, if you say it is such and such, show me a sign. You said that with a VHS, and here comes the beta map. Yeah, yeah. But how, do we, how do we use that tool? Yeah, that's different. That's different than what we just did of setting intention yeah. to, to notice when we're letting the story carry us away knock us off the surfboard. So when you ask your guides or your angels or your loved ones across the veil, what sign are you going to show me to validate this, that you're here with me? That's simply a way of showing you, you are more than the story. Even though they're part of the whole earthly story, they have the bigger perspective and they know how to get you back into a state of balance. So it's always nice to know that you're not alone and that they will help you with this. So you just stop and you say, 
I'd like your help with this. What sign are you going to give me? And boom, I'll put something in your mind. Go ahead. Uh, is we're talking about uh, humanity going through this, coming around uh, all the different seasons, going back and forth and back and forth. Have you asked your angels and guides how old we are, how long we've been here, or how long we've been on this planet? How have I asked them? Yeah. No. Nope. No. Nope. Because it, first of all, it's not important to me. I don't, and part of me is afraid I might filter it, and I'm going to put out something as truth when. It might not come through my filters correctly. But the real truth is, like I said, that which never changes. So it's mostly philosophical information that I tap into. I think we could use the word story. <laughs> yeah. 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 Part of the story. Oh, you know, you know, you know, I have to share with you. I'm not going to put this author on report, but I was I finished a book on my Kindle app. Yes. And it's, you know, how they do. If you like this story, you'd like that one. So yeah. I was drawn to this one. I said, oh, I have really read that author. What is this, this, the story with this person? And downloaded the book. And it was so interesting that all of the scientific background, the spirituality background, absolutely in accordance with my experience until we got to the root cause of what we're experiencing now. And this person was totally in a place of fear and negativity and conspiracy. And I was stunned how you could spin the root cause of what we're experiencing and still make it sound like it's spiritually and scientifically truth. Mm. Fascinating. So let's play with that. I don't need de details. We can have root cause one. We're going to call it fear. <laughs> That's what was coming out of that, that Kindle, I imagine. Fear, 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 fear. I What's deleted it after, after like a third of the book said, mm, no, no resonance here. <laughs> well, because we are a VHS. We are a beta. We are recording whatever we're taking in. And then if we're not careful, we're going to play it back and play it back and play it back again on an endless loop. So why would we record it? Yeah. I love so it. that's root cause number one. What's more of real root cause? Your being. And it's undivided wholeness in flowing motion. That was David Bohm's definition of the underlying realities. Physicist David Bohm. Undivided wholeness in flowing motion. Once it has motion, now you're going to have fear and trust, and you're going to have good and bad and right and wrong. But the reality underneath it is the undivided wholeness. And where all is connected, you know the answer. That's love. So this I person love. had just gone to a level above where we're going to create this reality that's manipulating us and causing all this strife and trying to destroy us. That's part of the story. Let's take it back to the love at the very ground of all of this and all is well. Thank you. I can go seven houses down the street and be at the ocean. And <laughs> you and I have quite the affinity for the ocean. And the ocean goes up and the ocean goes down. And the ocean goes up. And you don't judge it because there is a wave. You also don't judge it because it's a trough. You look at the ocean and you say, thank you for your love. Thank you for you your love. You asked where we are right now. We're yeah. kind of going on the downside of a high. And that's why it's like fall. It could actually go down a little lower. But ride it out, everybody, by learning the truth of who you are. You're not only human. You're not only a story within this particular wave of reality. Forgive me. No, no other way to put this. Um, who is no. the surfer? Who is the surfer of us? What what kind of a surfer? How would we? What, what are we as a surfer? Well, that is what most people would call the soul, the more expanded part of us, the observer, the witness, and then we're here. We are that soul in the body, getting tossed around. The body gets tossed around, but just don't forget that you can shift your focus at any time. It's interesting. I lived on Maui for years and, and uh, Laird, Laird Hamilton, he, he was famous for it, uh, famous uh, big board surfer. And he would practice 
uh, lifting weights and things like that uh, uh, with like lead weight boots at the bottom of his pool. Wow. Um, because the waves, when uh, the wave Jaws is one of the biggest wave, uh, big wave places on Maui, uh, these are 60, 70 foot monsters. If it takes you down, it's going to push you under for up to four minutes. Oh. If oh. you can learn, I know it's crazy. If you can learn to relax into the bottom of the wave, then that three or four minutes is not an eternity. In fact, to take it on another analogy, I read this brilliant story yesterday. I think I, I may get the country wrong. I think it was a Greek, uh, somebody working on a Greek tugboat. Tugboat got hit, to, hit by a wave, gets flipped upside down, sinks. And people panic and they die. And he went out from this little air bubble and he went down the hall and he found the, the, main, the main door to get out locked. And he went back to the bubble and he went out to the bubble and he went back to the bubble. And finally he came back to his little bubble and said, I don't know, I'm just going to relax into this. Take it one step at a time. Three days later, 30 plus meters down, if he had gotten out and swum to the top, he would have gotten bent. He would have died. Three days later, there's a scuba diver looking for bodies and goes past his portal. And he waves. Oh. And he waves. And, and the scuba diver thinks, you know, it's another body. And I think he pinged the side at that point. And scuba diver went swimming away. His scuba diver heard something. And came back. And it was a long operation, but they rescued him. He spent three days down there. He didn't even know one night had passed because he had completely, like, the, like a Laird Hamilton who'd been at the bottom for three or four minutes, he completely relaxed into the event. You're so reminding me of my stepdaughter, Susan, who passed. She was a sergeant in the Marine Corps working on aircraft. And she got her wings, earned her wings, which required you going into this this fuselage of a helicopter in a swimming pool that they turn upside down and you have to swim out of it. This is a standard thing for aviators in the military. Well, they blindfold you, Michael, and you have to find your way out underwater. Of course, they have a lot of safety observers. She failed the first time. She had to be rescued and pulled out. She went, but she said, no, I want my wings. I'm going to do it. She went back in and she did it. And that's one of the things I admire most in her. She was able to overcome the human fears to this day, knowing what I know. I don't know if I, oh, well, she just said I would. Oh, I, don't know <laughs> I, I don't know if I would have the, the courage to do that. So uh, understanding that our human bodies produce reactions that, that are part of the challenge of being human. We came here as souls knowing we're going to go in this, put in on this people suit that's going to cause us to react when people get in our face. It's going to cause us to react if a snake rears up in front of you. What are you going to do with that? You know, it's just a fascinating simulation, if you want to use that analogy. I've got goosebumps. Helicopter, the fuselage, Susan. I have a, 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 dear, a dear friend, Jeff, who um, was a Navy SEAL. And he had to do uh, a sensory deprivation tank. Um, I mm. think it was for some insane amount of time, like 24 hours. And the mind cannot handle no negativity, mm. no anything. The mind is what goes crazy. And it is really what we're talking about here. The mind that we have to bring back to center and say, dude, chill. It's all okay. Well, then the body affects the mind. It's all connected. So it's finding that place of peace. No. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Susan. <laughs> Susan. Susan, Thank just, you, Susan. Yeah, she just said, you know, you would this time you if it's important to you to pass whatever test like the I don't think it's the Del Bar Dunker. I think that's a separate test for getting your wings. But if it's really important enough to you, you will practice being calm in that situation. A meditation practice is what we practice to be calm in life, to, to be able to surf with competence. And that's important to me. So that's why I sit here every morning and find the center. And it really makes a difference in this life. When I lost it a couple of weeks ago, I was aware that I was losing it. And then afterwards, I saw the lessons in that. So I have grown as a result. So you, you take a step, you fall. You pick yourself up, you go higher. This is life. 
forgive me for asking. How did <laughs> again? <laughs> you, you, yes. No, this is a deep one, and you've you've been you've been a great sport, Suzanne. How did you? Because I'll, I'll admit, I I go to the farm every now and again, as as they would say in in was it Ferris Bueller? Every now and again, we all go to the funny farm. How did you end up losing it? <laughs> I will have told this in my webinar by the time this airs, but. Uh... First of all, I was stuck in a in a in a do loop. I was trying to get from the gym on on a military base back to my RV at the military campground, and they they had blocked off every single road. I couldn't get there. A twenty hour workout took me two hours on each end to get back and forth, and I finally lit into these these young people they had hired to block the roads, and I just. I let out an F-bomb right in somebody's face. And these, you know, three 18-year-olds looking at this 60-year-old woman ranting at them. And at first they were shocked. And then they started giggling. And it made me laugh. <laughs> and then, and so then they let me through and I go barreling up to this other place. And now comes this airman who's guarding a housing area that I now have to go through. And he's about to tell me, you can't come through here. And I'm still like this. And I take my military ID card and I held it in his face and I said, I am in hell here. What are you going to my RV? And then I said, you got to help me. And see, it just, he's like, ma'am, welcome to my world. <laughs> it, 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 well, I could see it all happening. It was as if the soul said, let's go through this tumult and see what you take from it. And I realized it was my willfulness. I'm going to have that workout, even if, if they blocked every road, I'm going to the gym today because I had missed two days in a row. If I had not been so willful, I would have said, look, at they put cones all over the whole base. It's going to take a really long time. Do I really need to work out today? Is my sanity worth a workout? Losing my sanity worth a workout? See, so I learned. And I don't think that's going to happen again at that level. It was great. Ooh, 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 ooh. That was that was the key word. At that level. Level, yeah. That's why everybody's heard me say this before. I pray regularly. May my lessons be as painless as possible. I came this close to getting in the brig, right? That would have been painful, right? I, <laughs> I could have plowed through that roadblock. Bringing it back to the D word. Bringing it back to discipline. Bringing it back to mm, loved ones and angels on the other side of the veil. You sat and you meditated and you said, come, forgive me, hell or high water, I'm communicating with Susan. Come, come, hell or high water, can we learn to plug into the other side, to hear our loved ones on the other side, to get wisdom from the other side? The guides are saying each in their own way. Yes, it's going to unfold differently. You may not hear a, a clear voice speaking to you like I do messages. You may see imagery. You may be guided to what you know, but absolutely we can all learn in our own way to tap into that expanded state of consciousness where we're all connected and where our guides can talk back to us. So, yes. How important is that? I, I look at, at world leaders. A couple of years ago, I was gifted to go to a, a Nobel Peace Prize summit. I was not being gifted something. I can dream, but I got to go there. And I was thinking... If our leaders, and I'll put that in quotes, because I believe we are all citizen leaders. We just haven't fully stepped into our power yet to go hand in hand with each other. But if our leaders learned how to communicate with the other side, how much would that change everything? <laughs> it really would change everything. That is coming down the line. That's after we've gone through winter and spring is going to start showing that happen. And that'll be the summer. But that's not this lifetime. Everybody wants it now, now, now. But it's coming. That's what programs like this are about, Mike. Right? Thank you. Well, my next thought was, uh oh, is winter coming? <laughs> and, and then I can hear Suzanne going, that story. That story, yeah. So write it out. Every good story has its ups and downs. Every one. If it didn't, it would be boring. We wouldn't go to the movies if it was just... Mm, if we surfed and caught every wave, and I admit I am not, I'm, I'm a great, a relatively good open water swimmer. I'm very humble about the water, so I took the word great away. I'm a relatively good open water swimmer. 
but I can't surf, but I have to imagine if, if all of it was surfing without any of the challenge involved, it, it might get a little bit uh, eh, over time. Yeah. And when we're in the middle of it, we're kicking and screaming the drama. You know, I don't want this. I don't want this. But why do you go to a movie? You know, to afford the emotional ups and downs, knowing you can step out of the theater. This is the good news. We can step out of the simulation by finding the core of each one of us, the part that never changes. We can do that without even going into meditation, but meditation is the training ground to be able to drop into that space, eyes open or eyes closed, and say, this is life flowing. So you get to your opportunity to go in the brig. <laughs> you get to this fine young gentleman and Funny you have a choice cake file <laughs> oh, no no but michael the funny thing is when i finally got back close to the campground they had blocked that off and i opened the window again to the third set of guards and i said i'm just trying to get home which is my rv right over there and that's what all of us are doing when we act out we're trying to find our way back home. Home is this place of peace that never changes beyond the story. It, home is right here. So when the story gets to be too not much, just duck out for a couple seconds, take your breath, and then jump back into the drama and do your best to bring love with you. I've got two weeks and one month till the national championships to real requalify for the world championships in, in my sport of swimming and cycling. And I've, I've been on the, on the uh, Team USA this year. So it's been really exciting. Didn't get to go to the world championships. We had Hannah Bear surgery for her heart. Her heart is doing great. So that's our baby. We're very happy that that's top priority. And I've been sick. I'll put that in quotes on and off with, we'll give it the CO word, which is not in this case, you know, carbon oxide or something. Uh, <laughs> carbon monoxide. Power. Right. Yeah. Um, and I've just had to, <laughs> I want to train today and talk with the coach. And he's like, nope, not training today based on your numbers. And I'm like, do I have to go back to bed? Yeah, you have to go back to bed. Well, I have a choice. I can go back to bed and fight it, or I could actually stay up and fight it. And that actually brings more about of what I don't want. Or I can relax into it. In fact, I'll do a bunch more meditating in bed because well, what else am I going to do? There you go. You're flowing. Let's talk for a brief moment. You have a class coming up. The class you're talking about is soul to soul mediumship. Thank you. Which is communicating across the veil, communicating not through your physical senses, but through the soul senses. How important or valuable, I, I see it as everything. So, so I, I'm biased. That's my story. How important or valuable is it to learn something like medium? Got peace, like the commercial way. Right? <laughs> peace. <laughs> Want guidance, want to know you're not alone, want to know you're so very loved. If that's important to you, it's this, this ability to tap into the soul and communicate soul to soul is all important. Yeah. Can anyone learn medium? Every one of us, because we are all souls. My awaken way teaching number one principle, you are not only human. Number two, you're part of one big web connecting all that is. And the healing creative force of the universe is love. When you live from that place of knowing that, you realize I can do this too. You may, It may not be your calling to sit down and do readings for people, but how would you like to connect with your, your mother, or your husband, your child who passed? We can all learn to do that. If, if this Navy commander who had never seen a soul until my stepdaughter died, can do this and open it up to the clarity and the evidence that, that I receive. That's my calling, but I know we are all capable of at least a basic connection, if not more. And since you don't know what you're capable of, dive in. Thank you. So what is the event coming up? You have a free event specifically November 18th. The Shift Network is hosting, they're re, uh, introducing a course that I taught called Soul to Soul Mediumship. It was actually the most popular course the Shift Network's ever had. I didn't know that. And so I'm doing it again live, but I'm in a different place, right? So I'll be sharing new analogies and 
Uh, but the basic teaching is the same. And to introduce that on November 18th is a one hour event on what makes mediumship possible, how we can learn to connect and a little practice to go along with that. Thank you. And we'll have a link down below for everybody as well. What's one thing we can do, Suzanne, for our kids or for the new generation today? Love them to pieces. Look at where they upset you and say, could their viewpoint be another way of seeing things and listen to them. Thank you. And what's one thing we can do? We'll say, ooh, I guess I'm going to give two things. What's one thing we can do for the world today? What's one thing we can do for ourselves? It's the same thing. Find that place of peace inside and go there often so that you can bring that peace into the world and it will have a ripple effect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And any last words? This has been a lot of fun. We started deep. We've had some jokes. We've had some play. We've had some uh, <laughs> running from the guards. <laughs> just if, I just would like everybody listening to know that when my guides end every daily message with you are so very loved, they mean it for everybody, no matter what. Examine your BS that's keeping you from knowing how loved you are, how much you matter, and then be willing to just not believe anything that's contrary to that. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, I got a good woohoo out of Suzanne Giesman. <laughs> How does it get any better than this? How does it get any better than this? It's all story. I'll take it. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, dive into love, rediscover who you truly are, live from that higher place and above and beyond all else, shine bright. Wow, wow, wow. What a special interview with Suzanne Kiesman. And I love how far down the rabbit hole we went. And I hope you did as well. We've got the link below to her event. I've got the link below to our School of Mystics coming up four Wednesdays a month, helping you to be able to plug in. And also a link to Automatic Writing. It's automaticwriting.com to help you communicate with your loved ones on the other side of the veil, help you communicate with your angels and guides as well. That's automaticwriting.com. Don't forget dailywoohoo.com for your place to bring you up, shift your energy, and getting you vibrating at a higher frequency at the upper room. Here's a link to the next amazing video. Love you guys so, so much. Keep on coming. Woohoo! How does it get any better than that? Thumbs up, subscribe. Love you guys.